Hi guys, Larry Williams back again with BelovedStockCharts.com and this time we're going to be talking about Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies, which, oh my gosh, I have not talked much about these markets and you're going to see why, but they become really big markets, a lot of following here. So I want to give you some insights into how these can be traded, the problems with them, the opportunities with them. If you're a Bitcoin trader, I think you're going to learn a lot. If you're not, you're going to leave and learn a lot more. So with that, Let's get to Bitcoin trading. There's so much to learn about these markets. First of all, do you want to mine them now or trade them? Well, as you know, there's about 21 million Bitcoins, and we're getting close to that now. Just follow this line out. Notice how early on it was easy to mine Bitcoins, but right now, yeah, it's really tough to find them. Millions of dollars are being wasted on energy and computers, electricity, trying to find Bitcoins. So it's probably going to be easier to trade them. But let's look at the numbers here. This is really interesting. Now, this is from January 2018. At that time, there were 7,800 cryptocurrencies. The number of dead coins were almost 2,000, 1,984. The top five cryptocurrencies, and we're going to get back to this in a moment, 83% of the volume of liquidity was in the top five cryptocurrencies of those 7,800. So that's been one of the problems. Now, it was May of this year, there are now 10,115 listed cryptocurrencies. And, and that number is rising daily. So this is a huge transformation, a huge change in speculative markets. Um, and that's a problem. There's just too many choices with almost 12,000 cryptos, bitcoins, wallets, keys, storage, trading platforms. What's a guy to do? What's a gal to do? Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's such a, a huge arena to walk into. I really like what Confucius said. Keep it simple. Focus on what matters. Don't let yourself be overwhelmed. And it's just way too early to get overwhelmed in this Bitcoin cryptocurrency market. I'm going to try to cut through a lot of the confusion for us today because as traders, we cannot afford to be confused. So if you're going to trade crypto coins, is there really value here? Is there no value? Well, a couple of hard facts. They cannot replace the banking system as a lender because the banking system can hypothecate for every $1 a bank has, they can lend out uh, eight, $10. You can't do that with cryptocurrencies. Maybe it's failed. Uh, after all, the cryptocurrency bulls said this would be a widely used currency by 2020, and it's not. Remember, they take your dollars for their currency. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Kind of like the gold bug guys. They want to sell you gold, but they're going to get your dollars. So they want your dollars more than they want their gold. And also, oh my gosh, there's been lots of shitty characters, countries, booms and busts in this cryptocurrency Bitcoin market. So that's a real red flag. You've got to be careful of what you're buying. Will this replace the Fed? Are we going to have a new world currency? Uh, go to your room if you think that. I don't think that's going to happen. You're not going to replace the Federal Reserve System. That doesn't mean Bitcoin can't be traded. It's a speculative instrument. In fact, if you're going to trade them, probably the best way is the ETFs, because the ETFs have the most liquidity, the most protection, the most regulation for traders. So if we're going to trade these things, I think that's the best way to approach it, unless you want to just hold on to Bitcoins, because you think they're going to go up forever. If so, well, buy one, hold on to it. But if you're a trader, I think ETFs are the answer here. Now, the biggest Bitcoin ETF right now is Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust. GBTC is a symbol. There's a few others there. I've listed them for you. Bitwise, Bitcoin Tracker, Purpose Bitcoin Evolve, and the Galaxy Bitcoin. So you might want to look at those as well. But for today's presentation, I will be using the Grayscale Bitcoin GBTC Investment Trust. This is the granddaddy. Got the most volume, the best liquidity. And it's what I will be using in my presentation today. I, I think it is a good stand-in model for virtually all the other Bitcoins and the cryptocurrencies. We're getting back to value or no value. Well, is there value if you can use something? But where can you use them? Well, you can use them now at purse.io or spend a bit. The problem, though, your cups keeps changing as you purchase them. And I'll show you that in a moment. And they charge. When you convert a Bitcoin to buy something, you're going to have a transaction fee, a commission just for converting your Bitcoin into their dollars. Here's a recent a sample of a Bitcoin currency. 
Uh, and this is what the seller, if you're going to buy something from these people, all Bitcoin transactions are communicated in US dollars. So again, you're going back to a real currency. The exchange is provided by Coinbase. So you have to go through Coinbase to make the exchange. And this is the kicker right here. The rate's valid for up to 10 minutes. So if you don't buy it within 10 minutes, the payment is not completed during this time, you'll be provided with a new exchange rate. In other words, the price of whatever you're buying, whether it's a Tesla car, a pair of shoes, it's going to change every 10 minutes. That's frightening. Here's why. The uh, Bitcoin Grave Trust we talked about earlier has had a 57% swing this year from the high to the low. The dollar index has had a 3.8% swing this year. Does that matter? You bet. What does it mean? Well, let me show you. The more stable a currency is, the more widely it's going to be used. Why don't we use the Venezuelan uh, peso? Because it's not stable. Why do we use the US dollar? Because it is stable. So far, Bitcoin and cryptos are just too volatile for most commercial transactions. As you just saw in the recent slide, if you want to be a buyer of something on the internet, your price is going to change. So it's, it's just too volatile at this point, at least, to become a widely accepted worldwide currency. It's not going to happen until this market settles down, goes away, uh, or whatever. But at this point, no, it's not going to become a worldwide currency. So here's a real critical point. No one be, needs a Bitcoin. We can use the current currency that you have. So there's no true demand. This is an artificial, this market was man-made. It didn't come from nature. That means it's a speculator's dream. If you're going to trade these markets, this tells us that there's no real value like gold or cattle or soybeans. It's emotions that drive this market. Emotions are the driving force of this market. Once you understand that, you're going to be able to trade cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin, whatever it is, with a different perspective. And you're going to be a whole lot better trading it because you realize this is driven by emotions, not by um, what we typically think of going on in the marketplace, fundamentals. Okay, well, whatever the heck this is, let's learn to trade it. Let me show you some trading strategies you can use to trade Bitcoin. And clearly, there are a lot of people that understand this market better than I. I'm just a fledgling trader. I've been doing this a long time, almost 60 years now, but I'm still learning. And um, that's the process of a trader. But I can take the skills, the techniques from these other markets and bring them into this market because eventually, ultimately, all markets are traded by people. And people respond to fear and to greed, to ups and downs, pretty much the same way. It's just that it's more emotional in this market. Okay, so in terms of trading these markets, crypto, bitcoins, whatever we are, there's some things that are really helpful. Price patterns, I'm going to show you some in a moment. Gaps, this market is full of gaps and they're very valuable. Cycles, yeah, I'm always talking about cycles. They can be used here. I'm going to show you the best ones right now. Technical analysis is probably really good in this market because it's such a publicly driven emotional market. Trend analysis, clearly you want to be with trend. And accumulation, I think there are groups uh, or large traders that buy and sell, accumulate these Bitcoins, and we can take advantage if we understand their buying process. When they're buying, we want to be buying. Um, you don't have to be smart to be a trader. You just have to know who is smart and follow those people. First, my fallen angel pattern. This is an important pattern for stocks, for commodities. Here it is. Fallen angels take years to fly again. Once a stock falls apart, a commodity, Bitcoin, it takes years to fly again. Here's Microsoft. This chart is at 1999. Uh, uh, and look at that. Fallen angel, a precipitous run up, a break, and then we break below the, the up surge, and we just don't come back for a long time. There's that fallen angel pattern. And we don't come back from 19 from 2000 all the way to 2013, 2014, a long time before Microsoft really made new highs. Here's General Electric. There's that fallen angel pattern, sharp up move, break, breaks to the area of support in here, and it can't come back. Uh, there's the fallen angel continuing in General Electric. Oh, look what it did. Years and years and years wasted. What happens, here's AIG, American International, fallen angel pattern, big up move, breaks the support prior to it, and it didn't ever come back, did it? 
Here's the fallen angels. This is the marijuana stocks. Now, this is interesting. This is from a presentation I did in Moscow, Russia in 2018. This is a slide I showed then. said, oh, look, here's another fallen angel. Marijuana stocks. Big up move. We've broken. We fall apart. We can't handle, uh, can't get back to this area. And here's where I was talking in Russia in 2018. And this is what's happened to marijuana stocks since then a fallen angel pattern. So the fallen angel, a big up move, a crack, a little bit of a rally, and then we break below that support and we just don't come back or it takes forever to come back. Well, again, in Russia at that time, I was showing Bitcoin, fallen angel pattern, just like you've seen, right? Easy one to see that. And it took three years before we got back. So there's a fallen angel pattern I was talking about in Russia. And year after year, after month, after month, finally it started to go again. So the question is now, is this another fallen angel pattern? Sure looks like it, doesn't it? So can we analyze this a bit? Yeah, let's. The angel wings are broken if we take out this year's low or can't rally back to the old highs. So if we take out this year's lows, for sure, it's a fallen angel pattern. Or if we can't immediately get back into this area and get an uptrend going here, then it's a fallen angel pattern, and that's ominous. That means you long-term Bitcoin guys and gals are gonna have a lot of problems. So watch this very carefully for a long-term perspective of what's going on in this market. Just taking out this year's lows, tell you for sure, fallen angel. If we don't immediately rally back to new highs, fallen angel pattern. Okay, let's look at the cycles. There's a strong cyclical pattern in this market, and here it is. It's a 40-day cycle. Now, the blue area here is in sample. All of this is out of sample. In other words, that what happened in Bitcoin was not known back here when I developed the cycle. I am using timing solution software for this. Cyclical low, good place to buy. Cyclical low, good place to buy. Cyclical low, good place to buy. Cyclical low, good area to buy. So a 40-day cycle has been pretty demonstrative in this market. And bring it up to date. Here we are again. There's a 40-day cycle called for a rally. We've been seeing that in here. That rally ends about the 1st of, of October. Then the next good buy point comes about October 20th, about 1127, and at the first part of this coming year. So there's some insight for you of what we should be doing in this market over the not uh, too distant term in the marketplace. Now, there are a lot of ways we can use this. Also, in stockcharts.com, we have my intraday crypto coin forecast. This is my cycle forecast. I'm looking here at a very short-term basis, five-minute bar chart. Notice this projects what will happen. So we were projecting back here, the market should rally, it did. Pull back a little bit, start to rally, it did. We should see a low in here, the market rally, start to come down, it did. The current forecast, and this was made last week, uh, is about uh, we start to come down in Bitcoin. So you can look at yourself and see if that happened or didn't happen. But it's nice, especially for your short-term traders, to be able to have a view on a relatively short-term basis of what's going on in this market. And that's right there in stockcharts.com with my cycle forecast. You can put on a daily chart, 10-minute chart, whatever you want. I have found, though, for this particular market, a five-minute bar chart for interday trading is probably the best one that you can use. Now, remember, we looked at that 40-day moving hour, 40-day cycle. Well, half of 40 days, half the cycle is 20. So a 20-day moving average, which is the gold line here, is probably the best moving average line to use to help you understand when the trend is changed in this market. In other words, once we know what the cycle is, you can develop your oscillators, whether it's my percent R or stochastics or Bollinger Bands or whatever, based on the cycle component, not just some arbitrary number that's in the computer. And the best number right now has been to base everything off that 40-day cycle. Seasonality. Uh, you know what? There's a seasonality to almost every market. Some are really good. Uh, the market's crashing as I write this. And the uh, latter week of September, we talked about that happening in stockchart.com. Uh, reported it a while ago. We knew that in advance because of seasonality. The problem with Bitcoins and seasonality now is that we just don't have enough data yet to know how good the seasonality is here. But there's a couple of insights that I can share with you in really pouring over these numbers. And it's that 
usually we rally in October. Now here's my true seasonal indicator also in stockcharts.com. And as you can see, October has usually been a rally time from October, November, December into the first of the year. So clearly we have a setup coming for this market. Be nice if we see this come down to set up into buy point, but we can use seasonality. Be nice if we had a few more years of trading history, but if you look at your Bitcoin charts, charts, go ahead and do it. Year after year, look what happens in October. Buy signals, buy signals, buy signals, the market rallies. So that seems to be the strongest. And it's backed by the fact, what else usually rallies in October? The stock market. So again, it's emotions that drive this market. And you can use that in terms of the seasonality of the market as well. Well, there's some trading patterns I'd like to share with you as well. I mentioned their trading patterns, right? My OOPS pattern worked quite well in this market. Let me explain it to you. If the open today is below the yesterday or the prior low, buy when it comes back to the prior low. That's my OOPS pattern. A lot of you know about this. Uh, and of course, as always, if you don't understand anything I'm doing here, it, what, this will be posted on YouTube. People make a lot of comments there. Some are really positive, some are really negative. I get that, I understand it. I try to respond to those though. So if you have any questions there, that's a good place, a good way for, to follow up on whatever is going on today. Okay, so here's oops. If we open below the prior day's low and rally back to it, we're gonna be a buyer there. That's really all there is to it, pretty simple. So here's some oops buy patterns. Here we open below the prior day's low, came back to it, we rallied. Here we open below the prior day's low, came back to it, we rallied. Here we open below the prior day's low. Now the true low is here because the market gapped up. Oh, we bought a little bit of profit and that was the end of it. Oh, nice one over here. We opened below the prior, day, prior day's low, came back to it, big rally began. So that's a real simple oops pattern. There's another buy pattern right there. We opened below the low, came back to it and we rallied. So for you short-term traders that are looking for something, yeah, I can get in this market, the oops pattern, something I've been trading with since 1985, something like that, it works in this market. Here's more examples of it. Uh, open below the prior day's low, came back to it, big rally. Open below the prior day's low, came back to it, we rally. Open below the prior day's low, it didn't come back to it that day, but then we started a rally. Same thing over here. Over here, we opened below the prior day's low, which is down here, came back to it, rally. So that's one trading tactic or technique that you have. It does work on the sell side as well. If we open below the prior, open above the prior day's high, like we did right here, get back to it, sell signal. Open above the prior day's high, get back to it. Ah, oh, two sell signals there. Another one, we open above the prior day's high, we get back to it and the market comes down. Here, we open above the prior day's high and down we come. Are they all perfect? No, we opened above the prior day's high, we didn't come back to it stopped out. Two nice ones here, a nice one right here. So another trading tactic that you can use. Here's just more examples of it. Okay, another pattern you should be aware of in this market, gaps really matter. Oh my gosh, do gaps matter in this market? Look at the big gaps here. Back gaps have led the way in the Bitcoin market by a substantial amount. Big gap up to the upside, another gap to the upside, another gap to the upside. Now we start gapping to the downside and the market starts going down. Gap to the downside, we go down. Big gaps lead the way. So we can see the big gaps uh, and I'm using a daily chart here. Yeah, pretty good idea. That's gonna be a continuation of the trend for a while. If you're having a question what the trend is, ah, that's gonna identify the trend to you. Again, big gaps, this is a current chart. Uh-oh, we're gonna to go to the downside. Oh, we're back to the upside. So watch these gaps, they really work well to give us the direction this market's going to be working in. Well, nothing hurts a trader more than you feel so good about yesterday's price action. Price closed real high, you got a lot of money in the trade, then it gets reversed today. You'd already been banking or bragging about those profits. These emotional reversals are what hurt me the most as a trader, I'm certainly hurt you too. You think you got all figured out. The market's really strong, the next day, boom. Gosh, you should have taken your profits, right? Well, we can use that in trading the Bitcoin market. How can we do that? Pretty simple. We're looking for a strong emotional days. That's the first thing we want to look at is strong emotional days. Here's a couple strong big down day, really emotional. Big down day. If 
and only if we can get back to that day's high the next day, we're in really good shape to see the market reverse itself. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, here's a big down day. We didn't get back to that day's high, but had we? Oh, that would be a bullish sign. Same thing over here. Big emotional down day. Looks like a market eye. In fact, it was. If we could get back to it, yeah, that's a buy point. Notice here, big down emotional day. We got back to it. Buy point. Big emotional day here. Look at this market ran way up, came way off its high. Looks like it should go down. It doesn't. It emotionally reverses. If you look for that, you're going to have a whole new insight into charts and how to trade this market. Look for those emotional days. Just think about how did traders feel this day on this particular day? They felt really good. The market closed on its high. Looked great. If it gets back to that day's low the next day, the market's probably in trouble because what should have happened, higher prices, didn't happen. And that's the real key here. What we're looking for is when what, when what should happen doesn't happen, that's what sets up problems. Well, you can also use accumulation distribution in this market. There's a lot of ways looking at accumulation. You can use on balance volume and stockcharts.com. I have my accumulation index. Notice what happened in Bitcoin. As we're coming down here. Accumulation is coming to the market at rallies. Why have we had the recent sell-off? Pretty easy to see, isn't it? Higher high in price, almost higher high in price. But look at this. The distribution had gone on in this market. Well, it looked to the public like it was rallying. It was being distributed. And lo and behold, the market came down, which is exactly what you would expect. So you can use accumulation distribution in this market as well. Here's another sign of it. We just looked at the buy point down here. There's another sell point that we saw uh, last April where the market's rallying. If you just look at price, it looks pretty good, but we see there's been no accumulation. On this rally, there was no volume pickup in the market. That's really what it means. There was no professional accumulation. No surprise, the market came down. Another tool that I like and we have on stockcharts.com, which I've talked about this for years, my pinch punch indicator. We're looking at a weekly chart now. It's a setup tool, not a timing tool. When the market's been coming down and my pinch punch index gets above 40, we talked about this in the last time I did a stock charts com, uh, report as well. Market rallies, the recent market rally we saw as well. We got the pinch punch index above 40 and away we rallied. Also, getting above 60 means we're probably at the end of the trend as we were here, as we we're over here. So there's another index you can use that's in stockcharts.com. And in other words, what we're seeing, these technical indicators work quite well in these markets. Yeah, I know. Some people are smarter than others. Darn it all. So all we have to do is follow smart people. Now, here's my synthetic index. This is a gold market or the bond market. Sorry. The red index is the actual commitment of trade report. This shows what the commercials, the users and producers of bonds, which in this case are governments and banks, what they've actually been doing in the marketplace. And when they're this right this high, they've been buying, they've been buying what gets over here, they've been selling. Well, here is my theoretical index, because I think we can measure these guys. I've been following them since 1973, quite a while. And so this is my synthetic index. And when they're buying, we want to be a buyer. Uh, we can use a synthetic index. They're, they were buying, we want to be a buyer. The bond market, uh-oh, they're starting to move to the sell side. My synthetic index gets the sell area right in here, buy index over here, buy index back here. We can use that index. We have it in stockcharts.com, uh, my money flow index. And recently, the commercials, if you will call them commercials, were buying Bitcoin and it rallied until it starts to move the other way. So see how this works? When they're buying, we're in the area of a low. When they're buying, we're ready to rally. When they sell, bingo, the market comes down. So it's another tool that you can use to help you understand what's going on in this particular market. Uh, again, it's just a question of, some people are smarter than others. You don't have to be smart to be a commodity trader. I've certainly proven that. Um, but you need to know who is smart, where the informed money is. You might follow that informed money in the pinch punch. You might do it in accumulation distribution because that's measuring the same thing. So my idea is uh, find the people that really know what they're doing, the smart people, and let's see if we can't follow those people. Because this is another quote I love. If you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. I want to be where I'm not the smartest person in the room. 
We can follow this commercially daily in cryptocurrencies as well. Here's a daily chart now uh, of the cryptocurrencies and you can see about the same thing happening when they've been buying uh, in this area. We wanna to look to be a buyer when they've been selling here. We've just started to enter the buy zone, not a, not a timing tool, but says, oh, we're getting set up. We're getting set up for a rally. We're getting set up for a decline. We're getting set up for a buy. We're getting set up for a sell. Then after you have a conditional market, a conditional, oh, we're probably going to decline. Then you can bring in your trend lines, your moving averages, whatever you do for your entry techniques. But at this point, they're going to have a nice setup in the marketplace. So you have a condition that says, yeah, this is probably what's going to happen in the market. What a different approach it is to look at the market that way than just uh, oh, take a buy signal or sell signal. All buy signals are not equal in value nor are our sell signals. What makes a buy signal work is the condition behind the buy signal at the time we get it. And that's where things like following the smarter people, the commitment to trader report or my synthetic uh, commitment to trader report, accumulation cycles, all those things, that's where they really come uh, to value. Even on an interday basis, here's we're looking at a Bitcoin again on a 15 minute chart. Notice that they start to accumulate, we rally, they start to sell, we decline. They start to sell in here, we start to decline. Start to buy, we start to rally. So there's a lot of use that we can do with these tools uh, of technical analysis. Begin, uh, again, go is important because this is such an emotional market. Technical analysis works really well here because there's no real fundamentals. As I said, nobody needs a Bitcoin. Uh, it's even hard to change it any place. Uh, so this is a speculator's market. It's driven by emotions. Some people are dumber than others too. It's the other side of that coin. So you can fade the crowd. Here's an example of it. Here's my sentiment measure of advisors. The green line says when most advisors are very bullish, market comes down. When most are very bearish, the market tends to rally. It's a setup tool that we can use on a short-term basis. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Again, we see the advisors uh, it can get very bullish. And when they're very bullish, we come down. When they're very bearish, we rally. How can we use that as traders? Well, here's one way we can use that with a, my oops signal. Notice that the advisors were very bearish here. Oh, and we get an oops signal. Oh, that oops signal is probably going to work. Up here, uh, the advisors were very bullish and we get an oops sell signal and that one works. Up here, the advisors were very bullish. We get those two little oops sell signals and the market comes down. Again, notice the advisors were very bearish over here. Nobody wanted to recommend to tell people to buy Bitcoin and we have the OOP signal and away goes the market. Up here, we had an OOP signal, didn't really work very well. We opened below the prior day's low, came back to it, not much happened. But the prior day, look where the advisors were. They were not extremely bearish, nor were they extremely bullish. So you can use that in, in that fashion as well to help you in your short-term trading. That's a nice thing where we can combine a condition with, um, uh, with actual tools that we're using. Well, I'd like to thank you for the presentation today. I definitely want to thank stockcharts.com people for letting me do this. And again, those of you who have posted messages there, I'll try to reply to those. Uh, I'm still learning about this too. So it's always great to have some feedback from you guys and gals. I really appreciate it. And I think that makes for a lot better performance. And that's it. If you have more questions, you can go to my website, iReadyTrade.com. That's my website name because I still really do trade. That's it. The end, guys and gals. Thanks for being here. Look forward to seeing you probably later in the month of October because I think there is a big buy signal coming. Until then, my best wishes for good luck and good trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.